Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining in another week. Have a great show planned for you. We'll have Wheeling Chief of Police Sean Schwartfeger with me later on in the show. We'll be talking about the new public safety building that's going to be on the ballot this November and other things going on in the city of Wheeling. But first, let's start with some of our usual features. And let's start off talking about the Supreme Court in West Virginia. I've been following this story for a number of months now, really, and uh, an important decision this week by the West Virginia Supreme Court relating to the West Virginia Supreme Court. There were challenges by two individuals, two attorneys who have, have sought uh, seats on the Supreme Court, saying that the, both the appointments and allowing two individuals to be on the ballot this November for the Supreme Court should not be allowed, and that being Evan Jenkins and Tim Armstead, both of whom were appointed by Governor Justice to serve on the Supreme Court temporarily until the November election, and both individuals were also seeking seats on the Supreme Court on the November ballot, one for the Division I seat, that being Tim Armstead, and one being the Division II seat, that being Evan Jenkins. This week, the West Virginia Supreme Court, all five justices sitting by temporary appointment, uh, decided that those individuals will be allowed to be on the ballot in November and that their appointments were upheld. Judge Farrell was the acting Chief Justice. Uh, he was appointed by permanent Chief Justice, Just Justice Workman, to serve as the acting Chief Justice because she recused herself, as did Justice Walker, uh, and now, Justice Farrell appointed four other judges from around the state to hear this case with him. And those five justices acting on the Supreme Court decided that it is appropriate for those individuals to be appointed and it's also permissible for them to be on the ballot in November. And the challenges to remind you were basically uh, a couple. One is that um, Evan Jenkins' uh, law license has been in inactive for the last four years and that the West Virginia Code says that in order for someone to be on the Supreme Court, they have to have been practicing for law for 10 years prior to that time period. And the argument was he hadn't been practicing law for 10 years prior because his license was inactive for four years. Uh, our Supreme Court basically said, not the case, that he has held a law license for 10 years that was active sometime during his lifetime, et cetera. So he's allowed to be on that seat and then on the ballot. Uh, another argument with respect to Tim Armstead was that, uh, he, that it violated the emoluments clause for him to be there because for a couple reasons. One is that he had voted on a pay raise for the justices of the Supreme Court when he was Speaker of the House of Delegates and therefore he would be benefiting from his own vote to raise the pay of the Supreme Court justices. And then somewhat of a, a second argument was that uh, with respect to uh, former Speaker Armstead, was also pertaining to whether or not he is permitted to be on the ballot because he voted with respect to the impeachment of the justices whose place that he would be taking. So in other words, he would have had an incentive to, to vote for their impeachment because uh, even though he recused himself from that vote, he was involved in the, in, the, in the process initially, of course, as Speaker of the House and putting that before the House, et cetera. Uh, and because of him putting that before the House that he would be somehow biased or he had an incentive to do that because he wanted one of the positions. So the court also held that uh, that argument uh, uh, would not be sustained and, uh, and it was not reason to, to hold him out of the position. Uh, and I guess the last thing is that with respect to both these individuals is that they're uh, Republicans and that when Justice Davis and Justice Ketchum, who they would be replacing, were voted onto the Supreme Court, they were voted onto the court as Democrats. Uh, our Supreme Court is now nonpartisan, meaning that there is no party affiliation associated with Supreme Court justices. You don't know whether a Democrat or Republican. You may know, but it doesn't say it on the ballot. Uh, but back when Justice Davis and Justice Ketchum were on the ballot, it said Democrat next to their name, so they should have to be replaced by Democrats. That argument also uh, was found to be uh, invalid and therefore uh, Justice Armstead, Justice uh, Jenkins will be in those temporary seats and they will be on the ballots in November. And of course, as I've discussed on the show in prior weeks, you know, considered to be two of the front runners for, for those seats in Division I, um, uh, Justice Armstead uh, considered to be one of the, the leading candidates uh, along with uh, Circuit Court Judge Joanna Tabbitt from Kanawha County. Uh, she's been getting around the state a lot, campaigning, I uh, was up here in Wheeling uh, for an event and uh, is really getting around the entire state. And then in Division Two, of course, uh, Justice Evan Jenkins and then also uh, Jeff Kessler, who is a Marshall County attorney here from the local area, former Senate president, a longtime member of the Senate, uh, also considered to be one of the front runners. And, you know, as I've said on the show in previous weeks as well, it comes down to do you want career politicians such as Mr. Armstead, Mr. Jenkins on the Supreme Court 
uh, or do you want individuals that have been more associated with the practice of law or being a judge, things of that nature. Uh, and I think that's really going to be a decision that, that the voters have to make in November now as to what type of people do we want in the court, ones that are politically motivated or ones that are used to being around the law and making th those decisions. So it'll be an interesting uh, uh, race to watch because of the name recognition of some of the individuals um, versus maybe uh, some of the more legal type or uh, judicial qualifications uh, of others. So we'll keep an eye on that as we move ahead. Other big news is that President Trump is coming to Wheeling Saturday night. Uh, again, kind of a, because of this race in November, uh, he's been a couple times now in West Virginia in support of uh, Attorney General Patrick Morrissey, who's running against Senator Joe Manchin for the U.S. Senate seat. And, uh, you know, th again, this is something that uh, is, is very interesting to watch because Senator Manchin, a longtime name in West Virginia politics, uh, Patrick Morrissey, of course, not originally from West Virginia, kind of came in here to run uh, for political uh, seats and is now the Attorney General. And, you know, he's banking on the President's support in order to get him elected and defeat uh, Senator Manchin. Senator Manchin, on the hand, other hand, is uh, you know, running campaign ads, et cetera, saying, I'll work with any president who's willing to get things done for West Virginia. It doesn't matter which side they're on, and it's kind of shown that. I mean, he's, he's gone w uh, with Republicans on uh, a number of issues during the course of his career, despite being a Democrat, uh, and he says, I'm going to do what I think is best for West Virginia, regardless of who brings it up or who's the president. So uh, something interesting to watch, and uh, it kind of leads me to the, the, the quote that I want to share with you this week, because a number of people have said, why? Well, you know, they're supporting President Trump being here. Others are saying they're protesting President Trump being here. And uh, this quote from uh, British author Julian Baggini, I think is particularly appropriate. It says, you should protest about the views of people you disagree with over major moral issues and argue them down, but you should not try to silence them, however repugnant you find them. That is the bitter pill free speech requires us to swallow. And uh, I think a very notable quote there because, you know, everybody's permitted to have their views. You know, you may be in support of one person, somebody else may be against. Respect the right of free speech is one of the great rights that we have in this country, is the right to, to speak freely, to do it peacefully, uh, not in a violent manner, but to do it peacefully and to express your views, but also respect those that have the other view. And I hope everybody can do that with President Trump coming to town and understand that whatever, regardless of what you think about his views or the vo views of those opposing him, have respect for the First Amendment, for free speech, and have respect for the, for the ability of people to uh, protest peacefully if they so choose. And I hope that those that do protest do it in a free, peaceful manner, certainly. Uh, that'll be held at West Banco Arena on Saturday night. I believe doors open at 4 p.m. on Saturday. And speaking of West Banco Arena, other big news this week, new arena football team in town. The Wheeling Rough Riders will be coming here from Richmond. And, uh, you know, they've won uh, the title uh, two of the last three years. And, uh, really have a reputation for going out and having some local tryouts, getting some former local high school players involved with arena football. And, uh, you know, it was exciting back when the, you know, the Steel Valley team, the, the Ohio Valley team, the, the Greyhounds were here, uh, Steel Valley Smash, Ohio Valley Greyhounds, and uh, a lot of excitement back when, when that team was around. They, they won uh, a title or two themselves, and uh, I always enjoy going to the games. It's a different style of football. I mean, it's, you know, indoors, it's uh, a shorter field. Uh, a lot of different motion going on and, and uh, a lot of hard hitting. You're kind of right on top of the action. So it's, it's fun to watch. So I'm, I'm excited that uh, Wheeling's getting another arena football team. And I think it's something that the local area will support. I mean, as everybody knows, football is big here in the Ohio Valley and always seems to do well. So uh, we'll continue to take a look at that in the weeks to come and what that may bring here for the Wheeling area. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll have my guest with me this week. It's Wheeling Chief of Police, Sean Swartfager. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordis Show. When reviewing your oil and gas offers or royalty check statements, do you wonder, am I being offered a fair amount? Do I feel comfortable reading the statement? Do I have peace of mind? If you answered no to these questions, you need Bordas Mineral Management. Our passion is helping mineral owners protect and expand their mineral wealth. Our examiners tell you whether you're being treated fairly and getting paid what is rightfully yours. Bordas Mineral Management, be protected, have peace of mind, Recommended by the highest authorities.
Danoon Lumber. It's like a bad one's coming. Yeah. Right? <laughs>
is, uh, is the CEO of that new facility, which is a treatment facility, but she has already hired three social workers that will be a point of contact. We will sign an MOU with them and we will activate them every time there's an overdose for that purpose, to fill that gap. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Certainly we partner with um, local impact coalition uh, through YSS and work alongside them in prevention measures um, uh, as well as partnering again with the community, uh, drug take back. So we're kind of all faceted, multifaceted approach and we're heavily involved. Is there hope? Do you have, do you have hope? I do. It's going to get better. Absolutely, I do. I mean, I, I kind of compare, I use this analogy, I compare uh, the AIDS crisis that we had back in the 80s and 90s. Um, and, it, and it really, I think, boiled down to education. And I think that's another area that we always try to participate in, education and prevention. And I think at the end of the day, that will uh, rise to the point where we start to see uh, some abstinence when it comes to opiate use. Uh, and then in th at that point, I think that's when we're going to see. And I think it's coming soon. We've talked about the president's going to be in town on Saturday mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, big responsibility for you, your department. Uh, what's that like? You know, I'm sure you're communicating with Secret Service and people like that. I mean, what, 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 what does all of that entail? Wow, it's, uh, it's a big operation. Uh, you know, um, lots and lots of meetings, lots and lots of scouting. Uh, can't go into great detail. Sure. Um, but uh, essentially, I, uh, I appoint uh, an incident commander, and then there are multiple, multiple uh, members of the Wheeling Police Department that have uh, various roles from intelligence to motorcade responsibilities uh, and everything that goes along with that. Uh, and it's a whole lot of work crunched into six days. So uh, come Saturday night, once the president has come and had his rally and his uh, wheels up, if you will, out of the High County uh, Airport, then, uh, then we'll all take a deep breath and, and be glad that we were able to support that. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about this important election issue that's going to be on the ballot here in November. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. help you save it. Belmont Savings Bank. Focused on your future. So, how was your first day? Ugh. Long. So, Josh asked me about you. Daddy's home. Go get him. For your home, for your life, for more than 50 years. The Hardwood Specialists, the Noon Lumber. Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking with my guest this week, Wheeling Chief of Police Sean Schwartfeger. And Chief, you know, talked about the important issue on the ballot here in November that pertains to the police, the fire department. Uh, why don't you uh, let our viewers know what exactly this is and why it's so important? Sure, and it, you know, I, I would like to preface it by saying that in 27 years of law enforcement, I have never uh, seen a more justifiable need than the opportunity that's presented to us now. Uh, essentially, on November 6th, uh, election day, there will be for the city of Wheeling uh, registered voters uh, to vote yes or no uh, on a tax levy ballot that would fund a proposed public safety facility. Um, so I can speak specifically to the needs of the Wheeling Police Department, and I'll try to do that quickly. Um, to set the stage, we have 85 employees. Um, that's both sworn and civilian employees. Uh, we are currently um, housed in space that was, uh, and have been there since 1959. Um, the square footage that we have is 4,650. Um, just to kind of set that, that stage, the Marshall County Sheriff's Department in their new facilities as of a couple years ago, uh, half the size of our department, and they are pushing 26,000 square feet. So obviously the square footage uh, is a major issue and where that comes into play is uh, in a variety of ways, uh, primarily with our evidence storage. Uh, a very important uh, uh, piece of law enforcement is evidence, obviously. 
Uh, we, we lack space there. Uh, there's a lot of safety concerns that come into play. Uh, some of the things that we've done in the last six years are introduce uh, what's called geo-policing, geographic policing. Uh, so we use CompStat, uh, look at data. Uh, we've been able to fill the role of the crime analyst uh, that captures the data, shares the data with commanders, but we don't have any space to sit down with technology to actually display on a screen uh, the data, talk about, uh, do any type of training whatsoever. We just lack space. Uh, of the sworn police positions, there are roughly 48 to 52 uh, officers that are assigned to work the streets. They patrol, um, and there are four cubicles, four compu uh, computer cubicles where they sit down to do their reports. Again, it's a space issue. There just isn't any. Uh, there's no safe place to store ammunition, uh, training aids. Um, there's no armory to work on and store firearms. It's all kind of chucked into a closet or some safe. Um, I mean, literally, I could go on and on. There is no women's restroom in the Wheeling Police Department. So our female officers have to go into the city county building or downstairs uh, to the EMA office um, or the 911 center to use the restroom. Uh, if someone was uh, bound to a wheelchair, um, wanted to have a meeting with me, they, we'd have to carry them. There's no ADA uh, accessibility for them. Um, so it if, sounds like being outdated and, then, and also is, the space the is space. The, big, the biggest issue. It, exactly, and it is outdated, but the space is crucial. Um, we have no place to meet, train, uh, store equipment, uh, be functional. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a taxpayer here in Wheeling, uh, just like a number of our viewers, and they may say, well, okay, um, so this is going to cost me some money in my taxes, uh, but your pitch to them, you know, give, give your best 15-second pitch. Hey, here's why you should vote for this. Well, again, this is not just for the police department. It's, it's uh, for the fire department as well. Uh, the property that has been uh, vetted and identified is owned by the city. Uh, it's in an excellent location right at 10th and Market. Um, you know, Without having specific numbers to run and tell you what the impacts would be on your pocketbook, and believe me, I and every police officer at the Wheeling PD recognizes that. Uh, my pitch to them is, can you spare that 20 ounce soda per day, that cup of coffee per day, uh, to put towards something this valuable? You will get uh, uh, more proficient, more efficient, more professional police response, police activity, uh, you know, there are intangibles involved, uh, recruitment and retention, for example. Uh, I just, I, I need minority and female officers. I just had a female uh, candidate come to my office. What is she thinking when she walks through the confines of that no building? Doubt. Does she want to, uh, you know, make a career in wheeling with those facilities? So that potentially could hinder our recruiting efforts. Um, you know, I think make that investment. It's also a big boon for downtown wheeling. Uh, kind of keep that progress moving along which I think is going very well. Um, I think it's just a win-win all the way around. And certainly, uh, I'm not providing anyone that I talk to about this issue any fluff. It is certainly, certainly a dire need. Well, I appreciate you explaining it to all the viewers. Uh, good luck with it. Thanks for all you're doing for the city of Wheeling to keep us safer. And uh, appreciate you being here on the My show. My pleasure, Jamie. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. We need to take a break. When I come back, we'll wrap up the show with some sports. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. People in nursing homes are some of the most vulnerable members of our society. They're there because they can't take care of themselves. Those facilities have a duty to take care of our loved ones, and when they don't, it's important they're held accountable. We've not only collected record results against negligent nursing homes, but more importantly, we've helped so many families get the answers and closure they so badly needed. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Dana Hogerson. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration.
Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports, and we'll start with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Of course, big win last week uh, in Tampa, Monday night football. Got a lot of pressure on Ryan Fitzpatrick. I said they need to do that, uh, particularly in the first half. You know, three sacks, three interceptions over the course of the game for the Steelers' defense. The penalties have got to stop, though. The Steelers are leading the NFL in penalties, flagged more times than any other team in the NFL. Now, big rivalry game this Sunday night against the Baltimore Ravens at Heinz Field. The Ravens' defense giving up the fewest yards per game in the league. And the Steelers' defense is going to have to respond. You know, they're, they're going to have to limit up Baltimore to about 20 points or less, I think. Something they haven't done in a while. It is a home game at night, though, so I like the Steelers. I'll take the black and gold by four in this one to get a big divisional win over the Baltimore Ravens. Let's turn to college football. Let's set out your Saturday for you. Starting off at noon, number 12 ranked WVU will be at 25 ranked Texas Tech on ESPN2. Texas Tech coming off of a big win over Oklahoma State, but the WVU defense really impressed me last week against Kansas State, giving up only six points. They were flying around and went down to that game. Will Greer was really good. Uh, even his subpar games now, he's thrown for over 350 yards and five touchdowns. Did have a couple picks, but a lot of weapons there in Sills and Sims and Jennings. And I like the Mountaineers in this one. I think they're going to you know, go down to Texas, have a good performance, win by 13 on this one. 330, Tennessee at number two, Georgia. I keep feeling like Georgia's going to get upset, but I don't think it's going to happen this week. I don't think they cover the 32.5 point spread, but I do like the Bulldogs in this one. And then 730, a couple big games, 730 at night. Number eight, Notre Dame hosts number seven, Stanford on NBC. Stanford had to mount a late, late comeback against Oregon to come out and win an OT. Uh, Bryce Love is a dynamic player. Notre Dame made a quarterback change, and Ian Book looked awfully good. Five touchdowns, you know, three on the ground, two in the air last week. Keep an eye on the Stanford tight ends. If Notre Dame can limit third down conversions by the Cardinal, then I like the, their chances. Uh, night game in South Bend. I like always like home teams at night. Notre Dame by three in that one. And then also at 730, number four ranked Ohio State at number nine Penn State. Right here on ABC WTRF. Big matchup in the Big Ten East. Two quarterbacks that are fun to watch, but Trace McSorley, McSorley takes too many chances for me. Haskins playing awfully well for Ohio State. I think the Buckeyes go and get the road win. Last week, I gave you two upset specials. I hit them both. I gave you Texas over TCU and Kentucky over Mississippi State. I was pretty proud about that. I'll give you two more this week. Pitt goes on the road and hands number 13 UCF its first loss in a couple of years. That game will be a 3.30 on ESPNU. And Virginia Tech rebounds from that Old Dominion loss. It beats number 22 Duke on the road. Old Dominion was 0-3 coming to that game. How did the Hokies lose that one? But they rebound this week before the big game against Notre Dame next week. Don't forget, keep an eye on Clemson-Syracuse. Clemson's starter, Kelly Bryant, has said he's going to transfer because the new starter is coming in, the freshman. Keep an eye on that game. Clemson could get knocked off by the Orange down there at Death Valley. I don't think it's going to happen, but they better be on alert. That's all the time we have this week. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you again next week on the Jamie Bordas Show.